We are speaking on the topic the power of praise. Tell your neighbor the power of praise. Today we are going to learn about praise, the power behind it. So that you learn to walk with God in the way that you should. If you are here, music has not been part of your thing. It must start being part of your thing. Amen. Amen. See, God loves music. Eh? God, he's a music man. Yeah, to put it in our words, he's a music man. You see, he told Prophet Zachariah, I will sing over my people. So God Himself is a singer. I will sing over my people, sing at the Lord. I will sing. Sometimes I can imagine God singing. I mean, he, he should be a good singer. Because if he created all these beautiful voices and he can sing. And then there's something wrong. So meaning he's a good singer. He loves to sing. Amen. Amen. When he created Satan, Lucifer, he designed the inner part of Satan, put pipes, all sorts of instruments within this young, this great angel. So you see, when Satan sings, he has all the instruments playing in him at the same time. You see, he's got a voice. So when Satan sings, he doesn't need a piano, he doesn't need drums, he doesn't need flute, he doesn't need everything. Yeah. Everything as he's singing, all these things are coming out from him. Mm -hmm. That is how he was able to control the music in heaven. He was not an easy angel at all. He was a powerful. He was in fact a ruler. He was ruling. You see, the power that he had was so great to the point that it is what made him to think that he should be part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, and God the Lucifer. Because he had much power that he felt. You know that level where you've got so much power that in a way you, you now get to see yourself equal to God. That is that level of power he had. So he has so much that the power deceived him in a way to think that he is now equal to God. He can do things God is able to do. But he's, he he's forgetting himself that he was created. A light was coming out of him. You see? And, a, and, and fire was coming out of him. But he did not know that the light that was shining out of him, he was not the source of the light. God was the light that was shining and it was only passing through him for him to have impact on, on people and other angels. So later as when he shows up and the light comes out, he, he thought, he got deceived and he thought he was the one bringing the light. That is why his name was the morning light, the, 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 the morning sun. Lucifer in the morning sun. He was the one who, who, who brought light. He brought light to the kingdom of heaven. You see, but before, before they will start anything, he shines light on it. That is why Paul said, Satan can come to you as an angel of light. He's walked in the light before. He knows how the light works. That is why he's able to deceive everyone who makes himself available. No wonder he's deceiving a lot in the church. We are the ones to be light, but he's using the same light to deceive us. So this angel was an angel of music. So as he came down here on earth, I mean, God did not take all these things from me. When God gives you a gift, it's a gift. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is God. Even if you, even you humans, when you dash someone and get them, you don't, you get not to talk again. You come back and take your gift away. I take your I take your gift, but you are not talking, but your gift is with me. I mean there are people that are not talking with me as friends, we separated, we moved away, but I have their gifts in my house. Yeah, so it's like me today also have my gifts in the house. 
And so as we separate, you don't go with your gate. Amen. So the one that will come for his or her gift, then there's something in the heart. That can be big in this Amen. Amen. So Satan came down here with all this power of music. That is why he's able to corrupt the gift of music in any person if you allow him. You see, that gift that you should be using to sing to glorify God, you can corrupt it by the system of the world. Yeah. That is why he also has singers influencing them. They are singing this way, do it this way. That is why he knows how to put certain rhythms together for what they people put, 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 put it here. And when they release it, it just it hurts. You hear no, and your legs are moving. Satan was the one who orchestrated the, the rhythms and the beats. One corner. Let it be, then you see the whole. So we don't play with him. Now let us come to the power of praise. Open with me to the book of Psalm chapter 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 22, verse 3. Hmm. I'm reading from the, the Living Bible translation. Mm -hmm. The praises of our fathers surrounded you, your throne. Mm -hmm. They trusted you and you delivered them. Amen. Amen. Alright. On the screen, King James Version says, But thou art holy, O thou that habited, inhabit the praises of Israel. So what the first point. Praise is where God lives. Praise is where God lives. If you want to find the home of God, God lives in praises. So Psalm 22 verse 3 is telling us that God lives in the praises of the people of Israel. In other words, God lives in the praises of his people. You see, when there are certain things that when you do, immediately you are able to attract the presence of God right there. You are able to locate God quickly. One of it is praises. The Bible says that God lives in praise. So anytime God hears the sound of praise going on somewhere in his name, he immediately goes to live within that praise. So as you are singing the praises and dancing and moving here, God is right living among you because of the praises that you are singing to him. God presence will never come for any other reason if it is not in certain things. So what just moved God's presence right there was the praises that you guys just started out. So in other words, to attract God's presence, you must have praises around you. Sing praises and live in praises. Why? Because praises is the home of God. Who does not like to be praised? We all want to be praised. We praise God for what he has done. And a lot of times, praises goes with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praises goes with thanksgiving. So usually, as you are praising God, it is in a way of for things that he has done. That is why you are praising God. You see, you need to understand why you praise God. So that when you are dancing and shaking and clapping, you will, you will do it well. It's so sad that during times where we are, we are singing praises, you are, you, you, you are likely to find certain Christians just standing idle. Like, Clap, they won't clap. Move the dance, they won't dance. And they are just there. You see, you don't understand. What you are actually telling God is that 
you done nothing for me to shake my body for you. You've done nothing for me to clap my hands for you. What have you done? That is what you are telling God as you are singing praises and he's right there. I can tell you, God's presence can still be with you and you still be useless. Believe me. When God called Moses out of the burning bush, you see, the bush was burning. Moses saw the bush burning, but the, the leaves were not getting burnt. Then he realized that this is unusual. But listen carefully. As the bush was burning, God did not even bother to talk. But then, when Moses looked and saw, God also kept quiet. Until the Bible said, until Moses turned and drew closer to the burning bush, that was when God said, Moses. So up until Moses was just there, when he had not really turned to pay attention to the burning bush and drew closer, God was not talking, yet his presence was there. Until he made the efforts. So we can have the presence of God as we are engaging in praises. And you will still be there getting no effect out of it. You won't be affected. Why? Because you are not engaging in the acts. Until you engage in the act, then you can experience the God who lives in the praises. So as a Christian, your lifestyle should be full of praises. I'm telling you, your lifestyle should be full of praises. In your car, you are singing praises. In your home, praises. At your web, uh, uh, place, praises. Anywhere. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. When we come us together in the house of God, praises, dancing, clapping, shouting, making noise. It is where God lives. Amen. Believe me, there's that sickness that is in you that doesn't want to go. All that it needs is a very good dance. And shake a boss in the presence of God, accompanied by praises. No true worshiper can really worship God if that person has not learned how to praise. I mean, how can you worship when you've not even learned how to praise? I mean, how? How does it work? How can you worship when you have not learned how to praise? I don't know about you, but let me tell you one secret. Eh? If you want to find certain favors with people, you see, naturally as humans, when you tend to praise someone more, you are right. Because everyone loves to be praised. That was the secret David had with God. That made God to love David. Because David was a man of music, a man of praise, a man of worship. Just look at the whole of Psalms. You can come across certain ways in how David just described God. It's amazing. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all people shall see his glory. He who cometh in the name of the Lord. Ah, come on. Give him praises to God this way. If God will like you. God will like you. A person who, who expresses that joy in praises. I'm giving you the secret. So you can get to fall in the favor of God. Why? God give me favor. God give me favor. God give me favor. God give me favor. When someone, all that the person is doing is, you are mighty. When I look at the mountains, I shut up. And God begins, go on, go on. Somebody is doing there, you are just there. Give me favor. Give me favor. God Himself knows that even if He gives you the favor, it is for your selfish gains. God, I put the application. I need favor. Let me be chosen. But someone is busy giving correct accolades to God. God prefers that one more. Praises. 
So God lives in praise. Praise rather every time you set praises up, you attract God. See, that is why your house, your business, whether God will come live there, it depends on the atmosphere, the environment that you create there. If you are playing wrong, wrong things there, don't expect your business to prosper. Why? Because it's not God who, who, who lives in the place. A lot of Christian companies and businesses, let me tell you the, the gospel truth, God is not there. The reason God isn't in your business, let me tell you something. When you don't dedicate something to God, God does not fight to maintain it. Listen carefully. When Jacob traveled and he slept at that place where he dreamt and met God, he made a covenant with God. And listen to what he said. He said, I have made this place better. Therefore, God, I dedicate this place to you. It is yours. Immediately he said that, God came over to take ownership of the place. Listen carefully. After many, many years, when Jacob had died and gone many, many thousands of years, the nation of Edom had to come and build a place around Bethel and they wanted to take Bethel along with them, which is not for Israel. And what happened to them, they did not like. When they tried to take Edom, God came right there to intervene that this is a no-go area for you. It is mine. So look at me. That is what God does. Until you have dedicated something, God will never fight for it. Because it doesn't belong to Him. So when you, that is why when you start to have your business, your home, and you see, you want God to live with you. But the question is, have you dedicated the place to God? And when you dedicate the place to God, do you do things that brings or put God's presence where you are? A lot of times we may pronounce the blessings on you, which activates the atmosphere, but the environment in which the blessing should operate, you are stopping it. Why? Because you don't excite certain things that will cause God to live in the place for his blessings to work. One time, some, I think 2019, the Lord inspired upon my heart to, I don't know if I did it or I did not do it. Say, tell the owners of your church that have businesses to their work. In the mornings, the workers, if they want me to live with them, the workers should meet, I don't know, pray or something. I don't remember the exact instructions the Lord gave me. And they should. And they should cultivate. They should dedicate the place to me. They should invite me. And when that happens more, a lot of chaos that goes on within that place, it will cease because my spirit will be fighting these things off. Because a lot of times, the Lord said, the reason they are, they are having many things that are a whole lot of chaotic things, and all manner of spirit getting in there, is because the level of my presence there is little. So I don't find hope at their workplaces. That was an instruction that Lord gave I don't know if I told that I told some of you to do it or not. So, it is good to be setting places in your car, at your workplace, in your home. Then God will come and live there. The Bible said, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest, meaning that lives in the praises of Israel. So if you want God to live in your house, be singing a lot of praises. Amen. When you wake up, praises. Oh, yes. I mean, look at the nature around you. I mean, there is God all over the place. 
There is God all over the place. Find things that you can glorify God with. In the night, just come out and behold the moon. Let me tell you, if you are here and you want to be a correct worshiper, eh? it's not food and drinking. I want to worship us, you don't hear anything, can you? When they hold the mic and they are leading the worship, you don't hear anything. But they know themselves, they don't experiment, they don't go out to behold God out there. The Bible said, your work, the work of your hands praise you. When you start in nature, it will teach you how to praise God. Because they do it much better than we. Birds in the earth praise God far better than us. We are poor. Humans are poor when it comes to praising God. Because of our fallen nature. Animals are ten times better in how they praise God. They make God more bigger than we humans. That is why when Jesus was coming and entering Jerusalem, and the people were stopping, the, uh, the Pharisees were stopping the people from praising him. He who comes in the name of the Lord, hail, son of David, and they said, stop, stop, don't praise him. Jesus told them, if you want to tell these ones to stop, I will command the souls to praise me. Because he knows what you guys are even doing, the stones can do it ten times better than you. Ten times better. The reason we are not able to praise God is because we don't go out there to behold the works of God. I mean, take your time and study the writings of David. This is the worship power. Do you find this way during worship? On how a baby, the bone of a baby is formed in the womb. The miracle of it. Say, ah, you are too great. Is your mind working? You are sitting there and a pop and a pop and my own. That's why when you come to hold your mind, oh, you are holy. You are holy. Oh God, you are holy. But that time you are holy five times and the worship is over. You are nothing better to say. You are holy, you are holy, <laughs> you are holy. He's worthy, lift up your hands, he's worthy, he's worthy. Tell her he's worthy. Uh, let them be silent. <laughs> uh, we'll be quiet. Uh. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our worship. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 One time when my sister came to me, when she decided to be a worshiper when she sent the call of a worshiper from her. She came to me that you may not teach me how to worship because when you worship, then at Mother Church I was the worshiper, the one that was leading worship before my sister took over, then my brother Andrew took over. So she came to me when she was taking over from me that the way you send me you do worship, it's not the way the others they do it. I like the way you, you use creation and all these things to magnify God. Then I told her, spend more time in the Word and in the presence of God. And let your mind meditate more upon the works of God. These things will come out of you. And you'll be amazed at the work of God. And it is what will inspire you to lead people to worship. So, she said, okay. Then she let, she kept reading the writings of David. Believe me. A time came that Gloria grew in the anointing that when she starts to lead worship, ah, I could sense that the anointing was on her. So you could see that the day that Gloria doesn't lead the worship, and she started to lead the worship. Because all the time she was the one leading it. And the words that she would say and bring out of her spirit, she was spending more time, more time studying, studying, observing. And it was easy for her because with her nature, she loved natural things. She loved nature. So it became easy for her to behold nature. Huh. See, so sometimes Gloria will be like, you know, I'm going to fountains. I said, well, you are going there to do what? I saw the other time we went to the picnic, I saw a certain bar, I went to a certain garden. There were streams of 
rivers and waters flowing, the sound of the waters just makes me to draw more closer to God. I want to go there. Say, okay. And as she goes there and spends more time, the next Sunday it is in her worship. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy. <laughs> David was beholding the works of God. We praise God with his works. What is that? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Praise God. You see, as you are engaging us to worship God, you make us magnify him in that excellence where, of, where his greatness is it's, it's, it's something we cannot understand. You bring his greatness to us. This is God. That is amazing. He's a wonderful God. He's mighty. He does greater things. Are you getting the whole thing? Yeah. This is where you can find the presence of God living with you. So one of the ways that you can have God's presence living with you is when you turn yourself into a worshiper or a person who praises God. You have the presence of God more with you. So if you, if you are here and you are not a man of prayer and you are not a woman of prayer, then become a man or a woman of worship and praise. And you have the presence as well. Do you get what I'm saying? So God inhabits the praises of his people. The second one, praise gives us access to the throne room of God. Praise gives us access to the throne room of God. Open Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. Praise gives us access to the throne room of God. Yes. Yes. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Go into his courts with praise. Eka my God. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So I said, praise goes with thanking God as well. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now listen to me. It is praises that opens the gates and the door of the presence of God to you. So it is what gives you access God's presence is always locked to come into God's presence. You don't just jump, jump and just say, hey, God, I'm here. You are here for what? You are here for what? You see, that is why you can, you, you, we, we can come to church, but you will never feel connected to God. You, you will never feel connected until certain things have been done. The reason why we sing praises in the house. Uh, out, out. The reason why we sing praises in the house of God is to open the door of the presence of God. So you must come in as you are coming into God's visible presence. He needs you to be praising Him. If you can't do that, get out. It's as simple as that. If you cannot go up today. So even with your prayers, you don't just jump in. You think God is interested to just hear your many problems, which you already know. Be serious. It's bigger than your complaints and your problems you are bringing to him. Enter the right way. Bring the praises. I mean, it's best wants to hear how big he is than your problems. You see, when you begin to praise him, Praise him, bless his name, give thanks to him for things he has done and things he's able to do. As it is moving, you see, God starts to feel big and become big and say, Come in, come in, come in, open that to me. Let me tell you, there is one of the secrets to getting closer to great men and great people. The Bible said, A man's gates will make room for him before great men. You don't 
just get into a get an audience with a person who is great. Just like that. That's why when you are trying to make your way out, they will tell you it's busy, it's busy. Just try to get a guest and say, no, I want to give I want to give um, um, Bill Gates a gift. They say, oh, okay, come in. Yeah. It's that is why a lot of times even rich people get to receive more gifts than even the poor people. That meanwhile, the poor people should rather be taking gifts and be receiving it. You are giving the money, the money is more to the rich people who already have money. Why? Because people do that in order to get an audience with the great people. So you don't just jump to enter the presence of any great person anyhow. That is why with God, you must come with praises. I mean, do something from your heart. Praise Him, make Him feel good, make Him feel great. Then before you can have an encounter with Him, And when you start to praise God, you praise God, you praise God. You see, as God is becoming bigger and bigger, His presence now becomes tangible to you. Now, when you tend to feel the presence of God, nobody will tell you, but the Holy Spirit Himself will usher you in His presence. Come. Because you will feel His presence ushering you right into His presence. Then, when you are in His presence, you can feel the Father Son, Father Daughter relationship with Him. Now, you can talk to God. As you are talking to your father, free in your spirit. That's what we call it working. Yes, it's working. Are, we, are you getting it? So, praise will give you access to the throne room of God. So, if you want to get into the throne room of God and give praises. So, when we start, as we sing, game, see, let me tell you, as when we enter the church and say, The Lord is in uh, it's good. But God has not really taken seat yet. Yes. He's not taking seat up until the praises and start the, the starting. Then he feels enthroned. The Bible said God is enthroned on the praises of his people. Meaning it is the praises that enthrones God. He sits on his throne by your praises. Are you getting it? So now when God sits on the throne, oh, and we make him pay. See how mama dances. This is she's the female version of baby in this house. Amen. Amen. She'll always be fresh. Amen. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> She'll always be fresh. That is true. I watch her, you see, she, she, she all the time she's dancing. See, in this house we have set, certain dances. That will be mad then. Uh, and there are levels to brother Dominic is also in this group. Then when he gets some suits, the dancer is a different level. Uh, I watched a certain video where they, they were dancing. We organized the, the, the line. I saw them they were doing hey, hey, hey. Hey. Oh, hey, man. All these things. It's what makes God reveal himself to you. Brings you more closer to his presence. So if you want to incite God more in his presence, please engage in praises. Anything of you and within you, let it praise God. Amen. David danced and he was half naked. And he did not bother our mind. He was half naked. And the wife was sitting on top of the window. She was feeling embarrassed that the husband, a whole kid, have you forgotten yourself? How could you be dancing and your clothes are, your clothes is falling off are in, among the people? You are disgraceful. Was, when she had that thought and she said that, hey, God just was like, hey, 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 ah, now you have made a mistake. You have made a mistake. You see, you can gossip about anybody. I never gossip about a person dancing in my presence. Yes. That one, for what you have said, your womb are closed. You will never give birth to you die. Yes. So watch your tongues. Amen. Don't play jokes with any person who is a worshiper. 
I mean, I beg you. I, I beg you. I beg you. Any person that is doing something in the name of praising God, I beg you. Don't open your mouth to even criticize or condemn the shoes. Is the shoes are not nice. The way he's moving is like God. Come, God bless Satan. Put you and put something in your mind. God may not close your womb, but your job. I've been having that thought alone. Your job that month, you will go dry. You come to me, Papa, pray. Things were not right. And as, I'm pray, as I try to put my head, God will tell me, Brad, don't <laughs> say the blessing. It is the judgment. Then I also tell you, my sister, go in peace. You are to do it well. Go in peace. Because God is actually punishing you. Do you get what I'm saying? So don't play against anyone that does anything in the presence of God. Why? Because as David was dancing and all, the throne room of God has been made open to him. So he was not just doing it before the eyes of mere men. So the best way to punish your uh, uh, critics and your gossipers is not just to be fighting and just turn yourself into a worshiper. All that they speak against you, it will be on their own heads. Are you getting it? So be very mindful. Be very mindful. A person that worships God and it's a, a, that person is a praise instrument. So dance and move. Uh, your body is for God. Dance, shake yourself. Move. Don't feel too gentle in the house of God. Uh, Pastor, you know, I just, I mean, I'm too cool for this. Hey, stop fooling. Stop fooling. You are too cool for what? Come to the presence of God, you are too cool. The way these are, the way they behave. I've seen a lot of youngsters in the church and I look at them. You see them, uh, I'm shy of this girl. Pastor, you don't know, you won't understand. Me, I won't understand. Because of this girl, I won't understand. You have to dance before your God. You are looking at people. Someone who wants to come and dance, but you are shy. You see, in God's house, it's not about how much you can dance. We are not looking for dancing competition of those who can dance. Just, let me see, just get out of your chair. Come check yourself. I mean, the dancing formula is simple. If you don't know how to dance, just swing yourself like that. Just go, uh, and you come, uh, just follow the line. Follow the line. Follow the line. Don't do anything. Just follow. When it is your time to dance, you can sit down. God will be happy with you.
I mean, all these gospel songs are there. Download, listen, play. Play all the time. Amen. Amen. The third one, people. Praise changes the atmosphere in and around your life. Praises change the atmosphere in and around your life. Open with me to Isaiah 61, verse 3 to 4. Praise will change the atmosphere in and around your life. Isaiah 61, verse 3 to 4. Yes. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3 to 4. Uh-huh. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, mm. the oil of joy for mourning, mm. the garment of praise for the spirit Ibala. of heaviness. The garment of what? Praise. <laughs> ah. That they may be called trees of righteousness, Arianos. the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Yeah. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. Mm -hmm. They shall rise up the former desolations. Amen. And they shall repair the ruined cities. Listen carefully. This is for people who have put on the garment of praise. This is what God is speaking and talking about. Them. Uh -huh. The desolation of many generations. Amen. Amen. Praise changes the atmosphere. So God is saying that in verse 3, he said, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. When your spirit is heavy, the only anointing that can take it off is praise. That's what God is saying. The garment of praise is able to take off the spirit of heaviness on you. So those of you, those of you who are just taking up all to, to, to come to heaviness, you are saved. You are saved. Because even after that call, the next is Babalas. You are dying. I told the Bible say, give a call to the one that is dying. Are you dying? So why are you taking the call to cure your, your heaviness? I mean, after you are done with the alcohol, the happiness will run right not up the next morning. Hey, I'm still here. I'm not gone. And you continue. So why don't you exchange it for something more powerful? For God said that the person that is able to put on the garment of praise, it will be able to lift up the spirit of heaviness of the person. So, the moment you realize your spirit is heavy, sad, depressed, enter into the praise room and do justice in that room. Praise God. Put in music. Praise God. Father, you are great. Confess. I do this a lot of times, so I know the power that I'm talking about. Oh, believe me. When I lock myself in the room, <laughs> you should one day you should I don't you will you won't even get the chance but in case you are a witch I'm inviting you just because you a witch can come but you the person you want to come you want as a witch or a wizard just in the spirit enter when I not come to the church can do my own night and lock the door and I'm here just come and observe how I dominate the place shouting declarations as if I have Masses of people here that I'm talking to. The place becomes so hot. I take off and I know that I am with angels in this place. It becomes hot. And I won't sit here at the piano meditating. Meditating. This is hot. And you are in your house snoring and drinking all kinds of drinks. Declare lock up. Put the songs in. I have put many songs. I, I, I do my, my collection. Put in songs, play. Then dancing, jump. He has it, there is church. You see, after I feel a pain. That's 
when I when I start the prayer. Hey, you see, that's why I can pray and I, I will never get the whole night till the morning. Then I will live quietly. To feel, I don't know how to put it. It's like you are, you are ruling the world. I don't know. It's like everything is under your feet. Oh, I tell you. You become so happy. It's like they're giving you happy injection. And some injection at your bank that should make you happy. Like, I'm happy, I'm happy. Praises, praises, praising God. Sometimes I'll praise and praise and praise only for me to realize I'm on the floor crying. Tears. The amazement of the greatness of God. And let it come out from your heart. You will see that any heaviness, any thing that was worrying me, everything just vanishes. And I live so happy. Enter the house and I'll be happy. It's like the whole day, I, I become a happy soul. So what God is saying here is very true. It's very, very true. The garment of praise. Put it on. As you see my garments there. So when I'm, I'm happy, Heavenly laden with sorrows and pain. God is saying, go and pay that garment. Then you, you come. This is the garment of praise. Put it on. Do you get what I'm saying? And as long as it is on, the heaviness will be taken off. And to put it off. Because the garment of praise only delays the heaviness as long as it is on you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. So it changes the atmosphere. I want people in my house some time ago, the tenants in my house, the types of songs that they were playing in the house. Anytime you enter, I have the right because I'm the landlord. Anytime you enter the house, it felt so, it's like sorrowful. I, I could not really perceive what was happening in the house. So, with time, Gloria also said the same thing. And others were also saying the same thing. Then later, I asked them, why is this sort of sorrow in this house? Only for me to realize, the time I was in Bible study, the Lord said, that song is the play. So one time, one was playing some gospel song in the house. And it was, it was still good. Every day, the song they were playing, Father, you know my souls, remember me, my pain, me mo blo muyo, me from like every day. Are you the only one suffering? Every day. Remember me, God, me, my, my broken mind, my, my pain, my, where I am from, my, my ancestors. And then God showed me, I went to every room, those Ghanaians, the room. I told them, please, these songs you play, yeah? please, if you really want to, See God's greatness. I will encourage you to play songs that praise God more than you nagging your problems to Him. Because every day, when you, you see, when you are with such people, their language is always complaints. Yes. These are the people who feel prayer meetings with numbers. Because it's all about their problems. Someone told me. Pastor, you see the wise, how the worship God is different from how the blessed the worship. I said, in a way, it's true. When you listen to hill song, all these white songs, I mean, you have it, can you, you could see that they praise God more. They make God more big in their songs. But I don't know about other African countries, but my home, <laughs> down to Ghana. That what is that? There is time to listen to that. So I, I'm not saying it's wrong. But please, let it not be the, 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 the order of the day. I mean, God is my problem. Can you be more pro? Me not me pro. Me who be a me? Then they are there. Then they are cooking and they still playing them. <laughs> this is the person. When you call the person to sit and talk about God, the first thing you hear will be problems. That's the employee here, but I trust God. So I trust God. It's funny that I trust God. 
So please, with that, it will never change the atmosphere of your heaviness. Only praises can change the heavy spirit around you and inside you. Why don't you change that song and put a song like, God, you are so good. Oh God, listen, dance and shake yourself and see if your problems and your happiness will still be there.
play music, praise God, you bring the anointing in your room. You see, you don't really have to, you don't need a man of God to touch you always. You yourself can also inspire the anointing upon you, in your room, everywhere. Are you getting it? That is why I encourage the youngsters to play with the spirit. Don't just play instrumental. This musician they found, he played for anointing to fall upon the man of God. Today there are ministers in the house that when they minister them, sometimes I want to, I want them to stop singing. That's why I take the word because they are, it's draining me already. It's sad. The church we lack understanding in these things, so we treat these things anyhow. Anyhow, you you come, you we come. Why administration? Bruh, hey, you are holding responsible the glory of God in your hand. People have come all the way from their houses to have a taste of the glory of God. I know you got that, man. Bible 
Bible said that the people of Israel, when they saw God's glory, what did they do? They bowed down on their knees and they lifted up their hands. Nobody told them. That is true worship. Jesus said, true worshipers, those who worship the Spirit of and the, the Father in Spirit and truth, they are the ones God is looking for. Do you get what I'm saying? Changes the atmosphere. So, same as you are responsible, the ministry that you are holding, that is why you can kill us easily. You can kill the church easily. That is why I usually tell the Pharisees, write your key down. A wrong key. For your wrong key, we, are, we have to suffer. You may not understand why I attach importance to these things. When people move, make movement, I say, don't, nobody should move. Don't, you won't understand because that is how you keep the anointing in the room. And by all these things, you describe the anointing and it leaves. And what, as, as, as anointing leaves, we are, we are having social club here. Why are we here? The present just like, why are we here? To see your beautiful face and your what? And your clothes. Please let's be serious. Our beautiful clothes too. So why we are here. We are here for the present. We are here for the anointing. That is why when God's presence comes, let us respect it. Yes. Anything that will help you to keep the presence, do it. Avoid the strife. Be organized. Be serious. Amen. Amen.
is the person that brings that joy to you. There is a place that you can grab all those and the people are looking at you as if you are grabbing the jokes. <laughs> you have not been to places, you see. When God's presence is dry, you can grab those and they look at you. I can go to certain churches, I can grab those and they look at me. <laughs> then I will say in my mind, hey, this is your last assembly. Say they see her. This is your last. Then you do. As you are grabbing the joke, you are expecting them to laugh. And they are seeing what's looking at you. And they don't even understand what you are saying. Uh, and I also advise myself, it's like churches. So, that you could, it's not, I don't blame them. The presence itself is not there. The presence of God is not there. So, these are people that when you ask them, uh, it's Sunday, I don't feel like going to church. I'm telling you, the joy we have there, you think it's something. Let God's presence go up just a day. You see how a lot of things in this house will be very ordinary. Then you realize that they are not just happening normal. The love amongst us, we move about, we love, we are happy. You think it's, it's because there's a power of a presence behind these things. That is making all these things possible. Everyone comes to our church, they leave and they say, Your church is full of love. They're full of love. We want to be to you, and you think it's just normal. It's not like that. Why are they talking like that? Because it's not so with them. Yet they are also in God's presence. Amen. Amen. Last two that we are done. Praise brings deliverance. Praise sets people free. Psalm 15 23. Write these scriptures down. Our time is up. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Acts 16, verse 25 to 26. This one I think we should read. Uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Acts 16, 25 to 26. Quickly. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Yeah, 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. Yeah. But at midnight. At midnight. Paul and Silas were what? Praying and singing hymns to God. They were singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Hold on. At midnight they prayed and they sang praises unto God. And the point that I'm making is that praises bring deliverance. Praises set people free. Chains are broken when we praise God. So, a lot of times, once you are dancing in God's presence, you see, what is happening in the spirit realm is that your chains are getting broken. If you understood the power of praise, you wouldn't be sitting there idle or just turn yourself into a spectator when God's people are praising and you are there. That's why your chains are still intact. They will never break your neck. They will tie it out. They will also tie it to your neck after you don't want to learn. And when class of them, when they start making, calling pastors, Papa, deliver, I sense the spirit on me. You see nothing. Praise God and let the chains be broken. Because you can't say, you see, ah, hey, 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 then the chains are falling. And Satan is getting mad. I tell you all the time. It's not every day Kabbalah. Katos. It's good. But sometimes you just have to dance and pray. Asala is the dance and the praise. And Naina. You see, you know. Because the movie is there. One time at Manachia, the man of God came to lead us. He taught powerfully. <laughs> I saw the countenance of people is like, hey, you know, like people are ready to pray. They have got the fingers and let us dance and then. So if people were questioning them, you know, this is so pastor, he doesn't know how we do it here. After the word we pray. But believe me, after the dance the praises, yo, it was more than even on Sunday. Come and see that. No, wait. The time was up. We closed very late. It was something. No, we still didn't want to go. I remember Sister Dufier. So 
was smaller than the breast. Amen. Amen. Continue quickly. Verse 26. Uh -huh. Suddenly. Suddenly. There was a great earthquake. As they were singing praises, earthquakes were happening. Uh huh. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. The shaking. foundations of the prisons were shaken by their praises. You see, these things happen physically. But God is telling us it is what happens again spiritually. Because there are spiritual prisons. That is why Jesus said, when the anointing comes upon you, it will be able to help you to set those who are in spiritual prisons free. So the foundations of prisons will be shaken because of your praises. Uh -huh. And immediately. And immediately. All the doors were opened. All the doors in Kaparia. Listen carefully. The doors of your life that don't want to open. Sing praises. Get into the praises. Enter into a dimension of the praises that, hey, you now you are feeling that you are praising God. The doors will be open. Doors, opportunities, and all this sort of doors, marital doors, whatever doors that are closed. Praise God. All the doors will be open. Sometimes prayers can open just certain doors. But God is saying praises will be all the doors. Uh huh. And everyone's chains will lose. Everyone's chains will lose. <laughs> the power of praises. Don't joke. Don't joke. It is what David understood. That is why he was able to enjoy that grace and the power of God. So praise will bring deliverance. It will set you free. Praise God. Sing songs. In the morning, sing. In the night, sing it. At your workplace, be singing. If you don't have a, song, a, a, a good voice, you know one or two songs. Yes, you are the Lord. Most. Hey, sing from your heart. Don't just say, sing from your heart. Mean the words and the things you are saying. Are you getting somewhere? And set yourself free. When you live in praises now, the cause to me will be to be I can sleep. This one is somehow called five o'clock. The way the person has gone in, because I had a dream. You see, the head open. The way I just said hello. The person knew I was tired and I was sleeping. Because the face alone. Hello. Hello, hello Pastor. Ah, this is a bit of a mess. I was talking in a way to know that I'm tired, I'm sleeping. So it's well. When you praise God more, you'll be free and I will sleep well. You won't be calling me at five AM like that. Amen. And after the, the dream, I have to wait. The last one. And remember also um, the story of Joshua. The last uh, the, the the next one. Praise bring protection and preservation to your life. Write it down, Psalm 59, verse 17. Then the last point, praise is our weapon of war. The fifth one is praise brings protection and preservation to your life. Psalm 59, verse 17. So when you sing praises, live in praises, it will protect your life and it will preserve your life as well. God is able to protect you because you live in praise. David was exposed to so many enemies. God protected him because of how each and every moment he was praising him. Then the last one is praise is our weapon of war. Open some, the last one, open some 149, verse 6 and 8 to 9. Then we are done. Psalm 149. Psalm 149, verse 6. Psalm 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth, and a two-edged sword in your hand. Amen. 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 Did you hear the, God, the, 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 the scripture? Yes. Yeah. It says, let the high praises of God be in your mouth, and a two-edged sword in your hand. So as you are praising God, you are holding weapons. Weapons. That's why there is a song that says, My worship is a weapon of my something. Is that is that is what God is saying. 
praises. Your praise is a weapon. So, anytime you are praising God, Satan already knows you, you are packed with weapons. But the weapon is just your praise. It's true. There is no gun and anything to go and that, that as you are praising God, it's your weapon. That is why demons cannot come in whilst you are praising God. They wait for the praises to be over. Then they can bring the attacks. Why? Because as you are praising, you are embodied with weapons. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, who wants to come closer to a person who is holding two edged sword? No, no, no. So, the, the moment you start praising God, in the realms of the spirit, you begin to possess swords. You don't see it, but in the realms of the spirit, that is what God is showing here. Swords come into your head. You are dancing, praising God. You know you are happy. You have no idea what is happening in the realms of the spirit. You are possessing swords that is threatening your enemies. It's the way we fight. Arrows that Satan will shoot at you. The only cure and weapon to hit back is praises. One of it is praise. Praise God. But as you are praising God, a lot of things that he meant to destroy you, you see that it is not working. Because praise will stay in your spirit. The joy of the Lord which becomes your strength. Amen. Turn to 8 and 9, the same chapter 8 and 9. Let me 
tell you, God loves shouting. Amen. God loves shouting. Amen. That is why sometimes when we shout, it draws the presence of God here. Amen. Shouting. If you are, these are spiritual principles, so please learn how to live in them. I love you. Me becoming a pastor has made me sort in certain things. I was sick and crazy. God, they will tell you, man, I check. I own the check. I drive the youth. Hey! Me, I'm missing you. Dream Tower. Come here, me. Making noise, shouting. Driving the youth. You dance my boss. I gather the youth and I'm the leader. We move our one night, one night. Hey, then we take over. That's when I'm not playing. Understand these things. Great shout. And what happened with the shouts? That the wall the fell wall down flat. Wall fell down flat. Yeah. The God said, God, go up and take the city. Mm. Go up and take your blessings. Amen. That is it. That's, all, that's the battle. The Lord, that, this is God said, I'm, take, I'm giving the, the city to your blessing. Pull down the wall. Go and take your blessings.